Hello and welcome to part two of this tutorial on creating a slideshow with Adobe Encore. And in the previous tutorial we imported our slides or our pictures and we created a slideshow up here in our project panel and we have changed the duration of each slide. It was originally six seconds, we've made them five seconds. We've added random pan and zoom and we've also added the default transition of a wipe. And when we played it either here in the program monitor or we played it with the button up here, the preview button, we got something that looked half decent. If I click on that, you can have a quick look. And you can see that we've got some nice pan and zoom. We also got rid of all the edges. The pictures didn't fit properly, and we looked at how we could make all the pictures fit so there weren't black lines at the top or the bottom or either side. So we've created something that looks pretty good, but there's more that we can do. What we want to do next is we want to be able to bring in some audio, we want to be able to have the audio playing underneath our slideshow and then take advantage of some other bits and pieces that we can do. So I'm going to push stop on this and I'm going to click exit here and then I'm going to show you how to bring in audio. Now you've probably noticed over here in the slideshow options you've got the word audio and this big panel for adding audio and you thought you'd maybe double click in there but nothing happens. You need to bring the audio into your project panel. All your assets will actually need to be in your project panel. Now you can either right click and import as an asset or you can do the same with your file, import as an asset. But I find the quickest way is just to double click where there's some spare space here and that opens the import dialog box and we can go and find our audio which is on my desktop. There you go, Tango 1, double click to import. And then the simplest way actually is to grab it and drop it in this panel over here. However, there is another way, if I just leave it there, you've actually got a pick whip down here. And you can take the pick whip and you can pull it across and link it up to the actual audio file and let go. And the same thing happens, it ends up in your audio panel down here. And now that audio will play directly underneath your timeline. However, notice the timeline is 25 seconds long, the audio is only 20 seconds long. Let's play it and have a listen anyway. So we'll preview. <laughs> And now as you can hear, the audio's finished, but the production's still going. In fact, it's going to go on to 30 seconds and we've got a whole load of silence, which isn't what we want. So I'm going to push stop and exit here. What we want to do is have these slides playing for as long as the audio. And you will notice down here there is this wonderful button that says Fit Slideshow to Audio Duration. And as soon as you click on that, notice that the duration of each slide has changed. So the first one still starts at zero, obviously, but each one is now three seconds and nine frames long because that's the duration needed to be able to finish by 20 seconds. So if I do a preview now, you'll see that the whole thing finishes a lot quicker. Let's do preview. <laughs> idea I'm going to push stop on that and exit here so what we've done is we've made the slideshow fit the length of our audio now obviously you can have a long piece of audio in here you can have something that's three four five minutes and you can have 99 slides in any individual slideshow so the choice of audio and the amount of time each slide plays is completely up to you but also notice down here if I uncheck fit slideshow to audio duration you do have a loop audio button and if you only have a piece of audio in here say that goes on for two or three minutes but you've got 99 slides and you want the audio to keep going if you click loop audio it will keep going on and on and on until the slideshow actually finishes but it won't necessarily finish at the end of the music the music will just loop and complete as soon as the slideshow finishes whatever time that happens to be okay so that's how we can fit slideshow to audio duration and that's what we've done here what happens if I want to make one of these slides play in a custom way, in a different way, say I want it to play for a longer period of time or I want it to have a different transition, how can I do that? Well, what you need to do is select the slide that you want to modify. Click on the slide and then look once again over here at the properties panel. 
Now, we've already looked at the properties panel to do the scale. Remember we did scale and crop edges to get rid of the edges. But notice here we also have the duration, the in points and the out points, but also this checkbox in the middle that says match slideshow. As long as that is clicked, this length is set for you. But if you want this particular slide to say play for six seconds, not three seconds and nine frames, you uncheck the match slideshow and then you can actually physically change this. So I'm going to change that to six and zero, zero. And as soon as I hit return, notice the numbers down here and how they change. At the moment, each one is three seconds and nine frames and multiples of that all the way along. Uh, but now let's have a look. As soon as I hit return, they all change. All the other slides, notice this one is now two seconds and 20 frames. Everything else is playing a lot quicker so that this slide can play for its full six seconds. So now if I were to do a preview, these ones would bomb through at 2 seconds 20 frames each one until this one which would play for 6 seconds, this one would be 2 frames and 20 seconds and it would still fit, remember we've got fit slideshow to audio duration, it would still finish at 20 seconds. So that's how I can change the duration of any slide because I want it to play in a better way. But notice I've got two other things here, I've got a tab that says transition and a tab that says effects. If I click on transition, Notice at the moment my transition is match slideshow and the duration is two seconds, one second before the actual time of transition and one second after. I can change the transition for this slide. So at the moment it's the same as the rest of the slideshow but I could say do a dip to black. And notice I can preview it. So if we look here in the monitor and I click preview there you go, we get a feel for what it would be like and the actual music that's played. Let's do it one more time. And say I'm not happy with Dip to Black and I want to do something else. Okay, let's just do a cube spin and see what that's like. And I can also change its direction west to east. You can play around with these. Um, even have an option to reverse them if you don't like them. Let's just do a preview. Now I prefer Dip to Black actually on that particular one, so I'm going to go back to Dip to Black. But we also have this other tab that says Effects, and if you click on there, it's actually to do with Pan and Zoom. Now at the moment, Pan and Zoom is on every single slide because we have random Pan and Zoom for the whole production. But what you can do is you can change the way Pan and Zoom works for an individual slide. So at the moment, we've got it going from west to centre, but I could change it say from east to west. And rather than zooming in, I could have it zoom out. And let's do a preview of that. And you can actually see how it looks. So that's how you can change how long any individual slide will be on. You can change the transition so that it is completely different from the rest of the items in your slideshow. And you can change the way that it pans and zooms and even turn off a pan and zoom for an individual shot if you want. So, we've learned how to put music underneath our slideshow, how to do custom effects to our individual slides. And the final thing that we can do is we can also create subtitles. If you notice down here, we've got a little button that says create subtitles. Now at the moment, it's going to be looking at the name of the actual slide. So if I click create subtitle, and click again on the slide, you'll notice that it says seals, which is a match to the name. Now it also has here description ticked. Now if I type in, this is a seal, and hit return, and again select the slide, you'll see that it says seals, this is a seal. So whatever you have here in the name and the description can be brought in as subtitles and also you can change how they look you actually have highlight groups here so we've got this is the default one this is the second one that just changes color ever so subtly and the third one you can't change these as they stand at the moment but what you can change is the stroke around the outside of the text now do bear in mind if you have a light image and you've got light text you won't be able to see it but if your text has got both light text and a dark stroke it wouldn't matter whether it's over a light image or a dark image, you'll still be able to see it. So let's have a look at that. We've got a medium stroke. If we turn the stroke off, you can see that the text is quite hard to see. But then you have options from a very light stroke to a very heavy stroke. And you can make that selection depending on how the actual image looks when you put the text over the top of it. 
And finally, it says here alignment 100%. This box here, if you click on that, shows you the, the action and the title safe areas. This is the title safe area where we will show any text. At the moment, we're saying we're 100% from the top. If I were to change that to say 50%, hit return, you'll see that the text is going to move 50% up into the middle. So that's how you can place where your subtitles are actually going to be. So now we have got our slideshow created, we've got music underneath it, we know how to make any individual slide custom and how to add a subtitle. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to put the whole thing together so that we can very quickly make a complete DVD of our slideshow and how we can add another slideshow to the end of this slideshow so that if we have done more than 99 slides, we don't go back to the menu, but we can keep on watching them. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.